Hello everyone, I will be starting over with Neurology. If you like my video, then please subscribe to my channel. So let's start. So guys, today's video is all about hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus as the name itself suggests. Hydro means water. And cephalus which means head. Hydrocephalus can be broadly defined as disturbance of formation, flow or absorption of cerebrospinal fluid that leads to increased volume occupied by cerebrospinal fluid in the central nervous system. Before moving further on hydrocephalus, we should have an idea about the ce cerebrospinal fluid and its anatomy along with its circulation. CSF is formed in the choroid plexus of lateral and fourth ventricle. Precisely, ependymal cells of the choroid plexus. The process of formation of CSF is an active process which is supported by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. So, CSF is formed in the ependymal cells of the choroid plexus of lateral and fourth ventricle. The normal rate of formation of cerebrospinal fluid is 0.2 to 0 0.35 milliliter per minute. The normal volume or, or circulating volume of CSF is 120 milliliter in a normal adult. The flowchart here is all about the circulation of CSF. CSF from the two lateral ventricles move to the third ventricle by interventricular foramen, which is also known as foramen of Monroe. The third ventricle is joined by the fourth ventricle with the help of cerebral aqueduct. So the CSF moves from the two lateral ventricles to the third ventricle and from, through the cerebral aqueduct to the fourth ventricle. Then the CSF moves to the subarachnoid space by two foramens, which is foramen of Lushka and foramen of Majendi. In order to memorize foramen of Majendi and foramen of Lushka and their locations, we can keep in mind that Majendi is located medially and Lushka is located laterally. And after coming out from the subarachnoid space, the CSF is drained into the superior sagittal sinus via the arachnoid villi. So this was all about the circulation of CSF. Increase in the CSF production, then its absorption, may lead to the accumulation of CSF in the ventricles and the subarachnoid space ultimately causing increase in the intracranial pressure. This imbalance between the CSF production and absorption may be caused due to overproduction of CSF, increased resistance to the CSF flow, reduced absorption of CSF, increased pressure in the dural sinuses. Enlargement of the third ventricle may suppress the pituitary fascia causing pituitary dysfunction. Enlargement of the third ventricle may also cause the compression of the midbrain. In addition to this, increased in the intracranial pressure may cause cerebral herniation. Signs and symptoms of hydrocephalus are greatly influenced by the patient's age, cause of hydrocephalus, location of obstruction and its duration. Symptoms in infants include head enlargement, poor feeding, irritability, reduced activity and vomiting. Symptoms in children and adults include slowing of mental capacity, headache, neck pain suggesting tonsillar herniation, vomiting, blurred vision due to papilledema, 
double vision due to sixth nerve palsy, drowsiness, limb spasticity and difficulty in walking due to stretching of the pyramidal and periventricular tracts. Moving on to the types of hydrocephalus. There are non-communicating hydrocephalus, communicating hydrocephalus, normal pressure hydrocephalus, hydrocephalus ex vacuo. In case of non-communicating hydrocephalus, which is also known as obstructive hydrocephalus, it is caused due to the obstruction mainly in the cerebral aqueduct. So the CSF is prohibited to move from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle because of the obstruction in the cerebral aqueduct. Here, dilatation of the two lateral ventricles and the third ventricle takes place. Moving on to the communicating hydrocephalus which is also known as non-obstructive hydrocephalus because it is caused due to the impaired CSF reabsorption which is due to the functional impairment in arachnoid granulations. Here, dilatation of the lateral ventricles third ventricle and even the fourth ventricle also takes place. Now moving on to the normal pressure hydrocephalus. It is a form of communicating hydrocephalus. Characteristic triad of symptoms are dementia, apraxic gait and urinary incontinence. Now the last is the hydrocephalus ex vacuo. It refers to the enlargement of cerebral ventricles and subarachnoid space. Subarachnoid space. Which is caused usually due to the brain atrophy. You must note that it is not caused due to the increase in the intracranial pressure, which means intracranial pressure remains same. Diagnosis of hydrocephalus is mainly based on the clinical findings. In infants, enlargement of the head, disjunction of sutures, dilated scalp veins, tense fontanelles, Increased spasticity in the lower limbs, setting sun sign. In children and adults, blurred vision, failure of upward gaze, unsteady gait, large head and sixth nerve palsy. Imaging studies can be done by CT scanning, MRI scanning, ultrasound scanning and skull radiography. No specific blood test is done for the diagnosis of hydrocephalus. That is all for hydrocephalus. If you have any further queries, then please ask in the comment section. Thank you.